Hey guys, Dr. Joel here. Uh, we're getting into the thyroid system, and so we're talking about hypothyroidism. We're going to talk about uh, reversing that low thyroid naturally. What are the main causes that leads to hypothyroidism, and what can we do about it? So first off, um, if you've got some different low thyroid stuff going on, here's the signs and symptoms that you're probably dealing with. Um, just one or two of these symptoms here are enough for women to generally seek out care. And uh, yet there's a lot of different things here that might be contributing or related to your thyroid health and maybe you hadn't thought about before. So first and foremost, I would say the top two are gonna be fatigue and weight gain. So when you're gaining weight, there's something going on with your thyroid system. Um, oftentimes fatigue can be related to the thyroid and, and, and kind of tie in with that. Um, but obviously fatigue can be due to other things as well, such as adrenal insufficiency issues, um, iron and different anemias, things like that. Um, thinning hair. So if you have thinning hair or if your hair is falling out, that's a very common low thyroid symptom. Having cold hands and feet, essentially you're not getting blood and, and having good circulation um, out to those hands and feet and then those can get pretty cold. Um, dry skin is super common as well. Now I would say dry skin is often a sign of gallbladder, um, poor bile flow, poor gallbladder function, um, and that kind of thing. Um, but dry skin can also be a common sign of low thyroid. Um, the most common place people are going to see this with the thyroid system is with the heel on your feet. So a lot of times you'll get some dry skin, some cracking and things like that. Uh, here's the hair falling out. We mentioned that one. Poor mental acuity. Okay. This has primarily to do with acetylcholine. And so um, essentially, in order for your body to utilize acetylcholine, which is the main neurotransmitter in our brain, it helps us with memory, helps us with um, brain speed, all of those things. In order to utilize that, we need thyroid hormone to enter into our cells and stimulate that process. Uh, poor digestion, your thyroid helps things uh, to go. It helps keep cells going and, and kind of energizing cells in a way and uh, that has to do with your digestion as well so a lot of times if you have low thyroid your digestion and the release of enzymes overall movement throughout the digestive tract will generally decrease low sex drive uh, low metabolism of course um, these are common signs and symptoms here of low thyroid um, as i mentioned though that fatigue and that weight gain are usually going to be the most common but uh, as with each person, each person's a little bit different. You can have one of these really, 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 really um, bad symptoms here, uh, or you can have a few of them kind of to a mild extent. Um, it's going to vary for each person. So what are the common causes of hypothyroidism? So this is, this is it from a functional perspective, functional health, functional medicine, systems biology, whatever you want to call it. Um, these are the top causes of low thyroid. These are the types of things that I see in my practice all the time. These are the things that we address. And when you can narrow down, number one, um, which, you know, how many of these things are here, and then understanding which ones are most important, which ones are the things that are causing the most issues. And once you can get a hang of those things and, and really tackle those things, the thyroid will really uh, kind of increase in life. It'll heal itself. Um, that um, the weight will start coming off, um, the energy will improve, um, the hair will stop falling out, all that good stuff. So let's go through each of these um, just a little bit at a time. Now, most of these topics here, uh, I have a video on these talking through them in much more depth than we're going to talk about here. But the purpose of this video is to go through things kind of at a kind of an aerial view, just kind of get an idea of, hey, you're new to this low thyroid stuff, what kind of things should you kind of keep in mind that may be impacting your thyroid system? So number one is Hashimoto's. Hashimoto's is an autoimmune condition where your immune system is attacking your thyroid or it's attacking the protein carriers that carry your thyroid hormone throughout the body. Those are called thyroglobulin molecules. Again, I have a video uh, or multiple videos on this that, that get into more detail with it. But with any and every autoimmune condition, um, you got to figure out what's triggering the immune system. With Hashimoto's, it can be anywhere from a gluten sensitivity to um, 
a virus stimulating and triggering that to fungus. Uh, those are three of the common ones that I'll see in practice. Um, with Hashimoto's, um, remember that's going to be one that you're going to diagnose with lab work. Um, it's very, very inexpensive to run um, some thyroid antibodies. Um, usually ranges anywhere from like $28 to $50, something like that. Very inexpensive. Um, high cortisol, okay, this one's common for a lot of conditions, but um, especially with thyroid and low thyroid. Uh, if you have gotten stressed and then all of a sudden you start putting on weight, this is why. It's impacting your thyroid health. Um, and so cortisol can do that. Now we've talked about cortisol a lot more in other videos, talking about where it comes from, uh, what you can do about it, and so forth. Um, so make, definitely make sure that you check those out. Insulin resistance, this one's also very common. If you're eating too many carbohydrates, too much sugar, your insulin's too high, um, those are common causes for insulin resistance. But if you've seen the other videos, you know inflammation can impact and make insulin resistance worse. As your blood sugar goes up, your thyroid is going to be impacted and your thyroid is uh, not going to be able to function as well. So taking care of that insulin resistance is going to be huge and balancing out your blood sugar, helping your thyroid function better. Nutrient deficiencies. Okay, this ranges from a number of reasons here, uh, ranges and has an impact on a number of things. Uh, number one, your thyroid needs the right nutrients in order to make hormones. Um, some of the common nutrients people think about is iodine, selenium, and zinc, and those are extremely important, but you also have a lot of other minerals. You have magnesium, you have manganese, um, you have different vitamins and things like that that are really essential for, uh, for your body to make these. Uh, another common one most people think about is actually protein. Um, so your body takes amino acids in order to make the thyroid hormones, and, uh, and that's really important in that process. So. Um, estrogen dominance, okay, this is uh, a huge topic, especially with women. If you have any kind of uh, PMS symptoms uh, with your period or cycle, um, chances are you have estrogen dominance. If you have any kind of fibroid issues, um, if you have any kind of endometriosis, these are all estrogen dominance issues. Um, cysts can sometimes be an estrogen dominance issue. Sometimes it can be more of like a parasite infection type issue. Um, or even a, a high insulin, high testosterone issue like PCOS. Um, all of those things, if you're interested in that, definitely check out the videos on that. But estrogen dominance is a huge piece. And uh, for women that are on birth control, oral contraceptives, uh, when you take that synthetic estrogen, uh, the, the protein that binds your thyroid hormone, it has a higher affinity for estrogen than it does thyroid hormone, which basically means as soon as you take those hormones, your proteins that carry thyroid hormone will actually let go in order to hook onto the estrogen. Um, and so as soon as you start taking birth control, you automatically become what we call a functional hypothyroid um, patient. And when that happens over time, you'll notice generally gaining more weight, your thyroid uh, kind of becoming lower in activity and so forth. And over time, it can actually result in a, in a clinically diagnosed um, or even laboratory diagnose hypothyroidism. So definitely wanna figure out what's going on there. You wanna make sure you detox estrogen because generally with estrogen dominance, you're gonna have some high levels or toxic levels of different types of estrogen. Uh, and then you wanna make sure progesterone is supported. A lot of times with that estrogen dominance, remember it's estrogen, progesterone. If you have high estrogen, you have estrogen dominance. If you have normal estrogen, but low progesterone, estrogen dominance. So you have to figure out what to do to, to detox that and support that. And of course, that's a big topic that we go into a lot of detail uh, with that I go into with other videos. Poor T4 to T3 conversion. Okay, guys, remember when your thyroid makes hormones, it makes 97% of its hormone as T4, which is not activated. Your, your T4 is then going to go to your liver, your kidneys, your gut health, and, and some other tissues and get turned into T3 using selenium and zinc. So if you have a selenium deficiency, not only will you not be able to make as much T4 in the thyroid, but then once you make it, you might not be able to convert it into T3. Same thing with zinc. If you have a zinc deficiency, you could have issues here. Um, it, now, remember, 60% of this is converted and happens in the liver. So if you have any kind of 
um, significant liver issue, liver congestion, uh, you're not going to be able to necessarily activate your T4 and T3 very well. Um, so this is a really important topic. Um, uh, blood anemia. So this is any. So whether this is due to a low iron or low B vitamins, B12, B6, B9, all of those are really important. Uh, guys, I want you to remember with the blood anemias, uh, essentially all that it means is your body is not getting enough oxygen. It's not able to carry enough oxygen in its cells. Um, and so when we look at that, from that perspective, we have to realize the type of types of things that support oxygen. So obviously iron is a really big piece with that. B6 is really important. And there's actually a component where B6, pyridoxine, has to be uh, activated into something called P5P, pyridoxal 5-phosphate. A lot of times what people actually need is the active form. Um, but they can't activate the form because they don't have things like magnesium, uh, phosphorus, and things like that. Um, so um, I get into that in some other videos as well, but um, check, out, check out the anemia videos to kind of take a deeper dive into those things. Chlorine and fluoride toxicity, guys, you got to watch out for the tap water. Your tap water is full of these things. These things will cause low thyroid and impact your your thyroid, as well as things like your pineal gland and, and all kinds of other organs. Um, so you really want to watch out for that. Make sure you're drinking clean water. And then of course, if you're in the swimming pool a lot, you know, you want to make sure you have the right nutrients to handle chlorine well. Make sure you're not uh, an ac accidentally or unintentionally exposing yourself to too much chlorine and therefore causing hypothyroidism. Inflammation, guys, this can come from anywhere. Inflammation can come from infections. It can come from toxicities. Uh, it can come from the way that we think. It can come from so many different things, high cortisol, high stress. Um, actually, a lot of these things here on this page are actually root causes of inflammation. Um, as with the other topics here, I have other videos on inflammation, so make sure you check those out. Uh, one thing that's really important with inflammation is what we call fatty acid imbalances. That's where we're talking about the omega-3s and the omega-6s. We talk about how important it is to make sure you get a very, very, very um, high EPA content in your foods and you really watch out for those inflammatory oils and, uh, and that's so so commonly found in our, in our, uh, in our stuff, in our foods, in our snacks, all those things. Um, the emotional distress guys, you want to obviously keep that in mind. You know a lot of times women are naturally doing really well until they have some kind of issue with their relationship or marriage or what have you and man that can wreck things. Between that and stress uh, that can really throw your uh, thyroid for a loop and uh, really impact your metabolism. You start gaining weight, you just feel crummy, you feel um, kind of dull, your mood gets affected, all those different things. All right, uh, one thing that I, I should have mentioned actually on this first page, I'm going to go back just a second, uh, your mood. I did not mention the mood, but oftentimes when you have low thyroid uh, and your, your mood will be affected and uh, essentially you can feel kind of more depressed, melancholy, that kind of thing. All right, step one, how would you go about addressing these things? Guys, remember this is kind of a general overview. If you're kind of new to the thyroid uh, topic here and the low thyroid, this is kind of what I would encourage you to process through. Number one, it's gonna be important to rule out Hashimoto's. If you have Hashimoto's, this autoimmune condition, uh, that kind of changes the game with things. We're talking about a different ball game compared to inflammation or something like that. So with that, you can just run a basic lab test for that and rule that out uh, or figure out if you if that is an issue and then obviously you have to go down that pathway and figure out what to do to to find the trigger balance that out and so forth so um, you can run a test for that any doctor should be able to run that for you it's very inexpensive and uh, we'll be able to tell you if you have any kind of autoimmune condition there or not next you have to find and address the root cause of your thyroid so i would say number two and three are kind of going to go together here but when we talk about the root cause of your thyroid, we just talked about all of those. That's all these different things here on the side. And those are the things you have to really kind of narrow in and figure out uh, is which one of these might be playing an issue and um, you know how can we go about addressing that. So for example, if you have a life that you just are always stressed, maybe work is really stressful, maybe family, job, all this, um, I already said job, maybe family, maybe life in general, maybe things at home. Uh, if it's stressful, you got to figure out what we can do to help balance cortisol. Um, we got to look at increasing protein intake. We got to look at maybe some adaptogenic herbs, um, all of those different things. 
If insulin resistance is kind of the main driver, we gotta, of course, address things nutritionally. Uh, maybe look at maybe like a keto slash modified ketogenic diet um, and really increase that protein, reduce those carbohydrates and address inflammation, make sure you're getting nutrient-dense foods, all of those things. So guys, we can go down through this whole list. That's what we're doing. That's what I'm doing here in, in a lot of other videos. So make sure you check those out. Um, if you suspect that maybe your hormones are playing an impact, maybe an anemia, all those different things. Um, if I went through all this right now, this video would be uh, probably close to 30, 45 minutes long. I want to keep it a little bit shorter than that. General thyroid support. Okay, number three. So when we look at general thyroid support, we're primarily looking at nutrient deficiencies. Guys, general thyroid support uh, by far is going to be iodine, selenium, and zinc, but there's other nutrients I mentioned as well, things like magnesium, P5P, the activated B6, things like that, that can be also extremely important. Um, you can also get thyroid tissue. Uh, one of the things I like to use is called thyrotrophin PMG from Standard Process. That can be helpful as well. Um, so if you're kind of new to this low thyroid stuff, these are the types of things that I would encourage you to consider. Make sure you don't have the autoimmune condition because Hashimoto's because that um, is going to really change the game with things. You want to figure out what are these root issues and, uh, and then you got to, once you figure out kind of what those are, then you can start addressing those and that will help your thyroid. And then of course, general thyroid support. If you generally support your thyroid, you might find some improvement, but if you don't address those underlying issues, ultimately you're gonna get stuck at some point. If you address the underlying issues but don't support the thyroid, you'll overall get healthier. Your thyroid will improve, but your thyroid will still kind of be left um, somewhat downregulated because whenever you have an underlying issue, it suppresses your thyroid, you get rid of the issue, the thyroid naturally slowly improves, but sometimes you need those other nutrients to come in and get it back up to where it needs to be. So. Um, but this is kind of where I, this is kind of where I would look to and where I'd go. All right, guys, let's connect. You can find us on social media, schedule a consult or an appointment. Uh, we'd love to see you. We'd love to help you guys. Thanks for watching this. Check out our other videos talking about thyroid health and what causes issues there. I hope you've enjoyed this, gotten a lot of value out of it. If so, uh, do us a favor, like this video for us. It kind of just gives us an idea of what patients have liked and enjoyed and found benefit from. So thank you guys. Have a good one. We'll see you guys in the next one.